Hey guys, I'm going to show you a couple of different waiver wire options that we have in our league. So I'm going to kind of show you guys how to set up how to, the waiver wire at a certain time and date for your league for each week. So go ahead and log in the league as commissioner and then go to manage league. Under manage league, you're going to want to select free agents. This is where you're going to make all your waiver wire changes. So under the first option, it's going to give you eight different options for a waiver award method. So go ahead and choose one of these options. In a different video, I'll kind of explain what each of these options mean if you want to go ahead and check that out. So the first option that we have is the waiver claim submission deadline time. So right now I have the waiver claim going through at 11.59 Eastern time. And then for week one, it's going to be on Wednesday. And then during the regular season, it's going to be Wednesday and Friday. So you can go ahead and mess around with these if you want. So if you want to change the date, you can just go ahead and change, click on a different date, and it will change it to that date. So we got right now we would have Thursday. We're going to go ahead and move it back to Wednesday. So you can also have unrestricted free agent moves turned on. So if you go ahead and click that as a yes, right now I've got unrestricted free agent moves going on Sunday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So what this is, is a free-for-all after the waiver wire is through. So I've got the waivers going through Wednesday night at midnight. And then Thursday morning, all the players will be on their team from the waiver wire. And then I've got a free-for-all starting up Sunday before NFL kickoff that Sunday. So if people want to add players through free-for-all, you didn't get your player that you wanted on the waiver wire, you have that chance to get those players before Sunday. You can change this date to any time before this first date it has to be at least four hours later than this time to allow waivers to go through. So that's how you kind of add the free for all section in here. If you want to freely pick up players before the season, so it would constantly be a free for all. You can just go ahead and turn that on. It's going to turn the waivers off since you can freely pick up players whenever you want. So during the regular season, this is when you're going to set it up for after that first week of the NFL season. So you can go ahead and change which days that you want the waiver wire to run. You can only have the free-for-all period after the last waiver wire date. So I could not change this to Thursday because we have a waiver wire on Friday. So it has to be after the last waiver wire goes through. And then you can also change your unrestricted free agent period here as well. Then the next option is if you want to suspend waivers. So some teams, after a certain amount of weeks, you don't want to be, be able to pick up free agents anymore. You can go ahead and turn that on to like week 12. And then after week 12, you won't be able to use the waiver wire anymore. You can still get people through free-for-all if you have that turned on, but just not waiver wire. And then here's the maximum number of players that an owner can get through the waiver wire. You can go unlimited, or you can set a certain amount that each owner can get. Then the next option is a free-for-all. If you just want to have free-for-all instead of waiver wire, just turn this on, and then owners can freely add up players during the season instead of using the waiver wire. And we got maximum total of free agents an owner can acquire each week. You can limit how much each team can pick up each week. So you could have two. So each owner can only get two players each week through free-for-all and waiver wire. Then the maximum total number of free agents an owner can get through the entire season. So this kind of limits them how much they can get through the entire season off the free agents. So you can go ahead and set a number for that. And then can owners pick up a player after that game has started? So let's say we got a Thursday night game between the Bears and Packers. So they play only on Thursday night. If you have this as no, after that game is over, no one can pick those players up after that game is over. If you change this to yes, then after that game happens on Thursday night, owners can pick up those players after the game is over. They'll be on their roster. Their scores won't count for them that week, but you can have them for next week. And then can owners release bench players after that game has started? So if this is turned on to yes, the same thing for that Packers-Bears game. If it's Friday... You can release those players if this is turned on. If it's turned on as no, then it'll lock them into that position. You can only release them if they're on your bench. So if they're in your starting lineup, you cannot release them, even if this is turned on to yes. And the next option is how long should a release player be a protected free agent? So if someone has a team full of players and then they release a player... You can have it so they automatically don't go right back into the player pool. They can be in the protected list for 
a certain amount of time. So we got a couple different options on days, lengths, and weeks. So if you have available immediately, if that player's dropped, they're immediately available and can be picked up by any team. If you have next waiver wire, it's going to limit them to the next waiver wire. So if you dropped a player on the Friday waiver wire, he won't be available for the free-for-all on Saturday or Sunday. He, you'd have to wait until the next waiver wire, such as on Wednesday, whenever your next waiver wire runs. So I keep it as that, but you can change it to whatever you want. Then after which fantasy week should release players be protected for the rest of the season? So if you go ahead and change this to like week 14, any players dropped after week 14, they'll be protected and they won't go back to the free-for-all or waiver wire. And then players drafted in which round should be protected? So if you go ahead and select like round three, any players drafted in rounds one, two, or three that are dropped will be protected for the rest of the season. And then after which week should all free agent transactions be suspended? This one's kind of similar to the one up here, but this one is only waivers, and this one will include the free-for-all as well. So if you go ahead and change that to like week 14, after week 14, there will be no more free-for-all or waiver wire, and you'll be stuck with who you have on your team. If you have any questions about this waiver wire setup, feel free to contact us at 636-447-1170 or email us at support at rtsports.com. Thanks.